G'day guys, today's video we're going to take a look at the Torque Engine Management Diagnostic and Tools app that you can get uh, on your tablet or your phone. Uh, you pair it to an OBD2 port scanner. Uh, basically you get them off of eBay for about 20 bucks. So, you know, you can read as much into it as you want and take it as seriously as you want. But really just gives you a good idea of what's going on with your vehicle and, you know, so make sure you're not getting ripped off by your mechanic, basically. All right, so we'll have a quick look through it, Eddie, through everything. Uh, first reason people buy these things for is to uh, check fault codes and stuff when you get lights up on your dash. So we'll just click on that and we'll have a look. So it gives you the uh, option to, fault, to scan for faults. So we'll do that. It takes a couple of minutes. So I get, uh, sorry about that. So I get uh, the U1101 network code. Comes up on mine all the time. So from my understanding, that's just because... The power control module is not able to communicate with the automatic transmission because the automatic transmission does not exist in this vehicle. This is finished scanning. We'll click on it and it'll show you. I'll show you how to get the information on um, on your fault codes, so that you can look it up and get a bit of an idea of what um, what may be going on for your vehicle. So we'll give it a couple of seconds. So it's all via the internet. So invalid or missing data primary ID. So um, where are we? So the U1101 is the transmission control module on most applications. So it's a general thing. Um, so don't take it as gospel for being specific for your vehicle. But so we'll get out of that. Um, if you look up in the top corner there, there's three little dots, and it gives you the option there to clear the code. So I'm not going to do that because it'll turn my screen recorder off and I'll have to redo this video again. So we'll get out of that. Um, so your test results button, so we'll push on that. So this gives you a basic scan of uh, all the systems that run through the uh, vehicle computer and gives you an idea of whether they're running correctly or not. So this takes a little bit of time. So it gives you all the, all the things that it monitors and then lets you know if it's okay or not. Yeah, so this is basically, this is all that comes up on mine. So I won't go too much into that. Um, so you got your plug-in settings. So this basically lets you pick your car model, uh, and you can do updates and stuff just to, you know, keep everything fresh. Um, again, plug-in settings again. So this is for uh, my actual specific vehicle uh, because I've downloaded for the Mitsubishi Triton. The graphing results, I don't know about those because it can't seem to get them to work properly. Um, and then you got the real-time information, which is the reason why I have this. Um, so this gives me a rundown on everything that's going on with my vehicle. So you can get the voltmeter, uh, it tells you exactly how many volts the uh, alternator's putting out. And then, so you got the volt CM, so that stands for something different, but I'm not sure what that is. And then your volts AD. Um, so basically, from what I gather, it um, gives you an idea of how much power that your vehicle is drawing. So if I turn the air conditioner on, you watch the volts AD drop down. So there we go, it's dropped down to 13.5. I turn that off, back up to 13.9. So it gives you a bit of an idea of how much power all the systems on board the vehicle are drawing. And it gives you an idea of uh, your volt load on your alternator. Um, I also used to run a dual battery system on the back of this and it, uh, when it was uh, when you first turn the vehicle on after being out camping all night with the fridge running and whatever uh, had quite a heavy uh, uh, draw on the uh, alternator even though it was still a proper DC DC battery charger uh, so there it gives you a bit of an idea uh, exhaust gas temperatures so you can monitor those however I don't have exhaust gas monitoring or exhaust gas temperature sensors on this vehicle because it's only stock standard um, he's also got the uh, coolant temperature, the intake temperature, which varies quite a bit. So, um, just so you know, with your coolant temperature in the Mitsubishi Triton, um, it'll actually get up to, I think, 61 degrees before the actual gauge on the dash will start moving. So that gives you a bit of an idea of how accurate um, your your dash gauges are. So. Uh, and when it's up to operating temperature, so mine sits between 88 degrees and 96 degrees um, So that's a what, 8 degree variation 
yeah, and nothing comes up on the dash, so you don't see anything on the dash until it's too late. Um, hottest I've ever had this vehicle is 97, and um, yeah, nothing came up on the dashboard at all. The gauge didn't move. Um, intake temperatures vary a lot. Um, this being a turbocharged motor, uh, when you um, when you put your foot down and you build up the PSI, the intake temperature rises pretty quick. Um, it is pretty stable in this vehicle, so that's not that's not too bad. Um, if you have a look too, you've also got your uh, throttle position sensor. Um, so that operates off of your pedal, not actually off of the uh, throttle itself on the motor. Um, you got your vacuum gauge, which also measures your turbo boost um, and your intake pressure as well. So your intake pressure is um, different to your your turbo boost. Obviously, they work hand in hand with one another, but um, yeah, your intake pressure is quite a bit more than what your um, what your boost pressure is. Uh, another gauge that I have up on my dash here is uh, the load rating on the motor. So this gives you a good idea of when you're, um, so when you're touring around or you're driving around town, um, just how hard your vehicle's working. Uh, and it also helps you with, um, you know, working out like your fuel consumption. If you're, for some reason, your vehicle's using a bit of extra, extra fuel than what it would normally do. Um, all you gotta do is have a look at your load rating and it's usually gonna be higher than what it would normally be. Uh, if you're using excess fuel. So if you, say for example, you've got roof racks on the top of your roof and you're coming into a headwind, uh, your load rating will be up. So you're, you're using more fuel. So that's a good way to gauge as well when you're packed up for, you know, holidays and whatever, all the stuff that you put on your vehicle gives you a bit of an idea of just how hard your vehicle actually works when you're fully loaded up with the family and all that stuff and traveling uphill in a headwind. So yeah, so that's that's the basics of it. They're the ones that I monitor all the time. Um, so we'll flick through some of these other screens here. Um, so you've got quite a few different things that you can look at. Um, a lot of these things are not very accurate. So your pitch meter. Um, you've also got your GPS location. So again, this is running all off of the device and not off of uh, your vehicle's computer. Uh, you've also got uh, your g-force meter in the corner here, so uh, Quite interesting to look at you know when you're going over bumps and whatever just how hard you hit and stuff Again gives you a bit of an idea of how hard you're working your suspension um, But you know, it's, it's not entirely accurate and it's only going by what the device is feeling and not actually what your vehicle is experiencing uh, a map so that's you know Handy there if you want it basically and yeah, that's about it. So there's other different options that you can read through, but they're basically all the same. Um, you can set out your own dashboard in a custom way that you, you know, whatever you want to look at and however you want to see it. So yeah, so that's it. This is the main screen that I look at. So we'll go for a bit of a drive and you can see um, just what sort of readings you can get out of this thing. Um, so yeah, we'll just go for a quick drive. and uh, We'll just do a little drive around town. And um, you'll be able to see what's what. So just give you a bit of an idea where we're driving. So we're on flat ground. There's no no wind, really. Um, the temperature's about 26 degrees outside. take it out and we'll go up a big hill and you'll be able to see what the temperatures and pressures and everything do to the vehicle and just see how hard these vehicles actually work in your daily drive. So it's just another thing that I've noticed as well with just driving around and monitoring um, the intake temperature. Um, when you do long trips say from for example I did a trip from Carnarvon back to Perth a couple of days ago and uh, my intake temperature started at around 45 degrees um, and as I've driven back to Perth because I drove straight through for 10 hours 
um, the average temperature rose continuously um, throughout the trip and it got up to about 65 degrees so um, it is important guys that you stop and let your vehicles cool down on long trips um, so that's just the intake temperature and consider other things like your bearings and stuff in your wheels and your you know things like that that are continuously um, moving and just the amount of heat that builds up inside those those parts um, can cause them to fail so there's a bit of a yeah, yeah, a bit of something to think about there when you're on your long trip we'll just flick over to uh, fuel rail pressure so you can have a look at that uh, as we're driving along so um, this is measured in PSI so you're up around you know in the thousands of PSI and that's the whole reason why is it's so friggin expensive to get a um, to get a fuel pump for these things When I take off, I'll just put my foot down to the floor and you'll be able to see exactly how much fuel pressure is actually in the rail. So, you know, you're up around 22,000 PSI. So that's why it's important to look after your, um, your fuel systems and your diesel. Because this is the reason why they're so expensive to rebuild. guys so we're about to start to climb a small hill uh, so just pay attention to uh, the temperatures and your, um, your boost and your PSI just a little bit of um, interesting information on how hard your vehicle works climbing up uh, sort of every ordinary everyday hill uh, probably out in your countryside somewhere just about to start now going up this hill uh, should take us maybe 35 40 seconds to get to the top to see what see what's what. I'm gonna try and maintain about 80 to 90 k's an hour. up guys is you can set uh, temperature limits on your or temperature warnings I should say on your um, on your device so um, for example I have mine set uh, for running temperature uh, so it will give you an audible um, signal as to when your vehicle has reached operating temperature uh, and also you can set a limit um, as to how hot you want your vehicle to get before you actually turn it off or before it notifies you of what's going on um, so I've set mine at 98 degrees so we'll see if um, see if we can get it I don't think we will because I never seem to push past 97 which is probably a good thing but um, yeah we're almost at the top of the hill now guys so as you can see everything's working quite hard we're up to 90% load 33% uh, of PSI on the intake about 18 pounds of boost which is almost near maximum capacity for this vehicle uh, so there we go we've hit 98 degrees 70 degrees on the intake so we're at the top now so um, yeah 30 seconds mate that's all it takes is for your vehicle to get up a bit of temperature um, nothing on my dash has moved uh, however the vehicle's temperature has varied by a good 10 degrees so um, this gives you a good indication on uh, how shit your, um, your dash actually is when it comes to giving you a proper readout of temperatures and uh, voltages and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I would say that this is definitely worthwhile having in your vehicle, especially if you're using your vehicle as like a utility vehicle, uh, towing trailers, going forward driving through the bush, uh, really working, uh, really working your vehicle. Uh, it's definitely handy to know all of this sort of stuff. Um, on the plus side too, most of us already have a tablet or we have a phone, so this app will work on your phone as well, on your smartphone. 
um, and your OBD2 port scanners are about $25 to $35 on eBay. Um, so definitely a very cheap option um, compared to uh, installing custom uh, gauges and stuff on your dash. Because um, I know they can vary, you know, you can spend up to five, six, seven hundred dollars depending on uh, what sort of a setup you actually want. Um, so this is definitely a much cheaper option. Uh, for those of you who, like me, don't really want to spend that much money on your vehicle um, for these kinds of things anyway, um, I can think of things that, you know, I can much be better spending on my vehicle than um, putting in gauges and stuff that um, the manufacturer should already have on your dashboard for you. So anyway, thanks guys. If you find this video helpful or you've got any questions, uh, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will uh, talk to you in my next video.